What is going on all you minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at the Infinity Crusade Omnibus from Marvel Comics. Let's do this thing. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks in Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on January 6th and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. Now, this is the standard edition cover. On the left there is the direct market cover, only available in the direct market. Interesting that they went with the Mark Spector Moon Knight cover for an Infinity Crusade variant. Um, but this cover right here is the cover to issue number one. And for those of us that lived in the 90s, Gosh, is it really that long ago? Does that make me sound old if I lived through the 90s? Uh, but anyway, for all of us that lived in the 90s, we know that this was originally released as this gold-plated cover. Like, it had not real gold, of course, but like a chromium design to it, like a finish to it. It would have been really cool to see that here, but I understand probably would have made the omnibus cost a lot more. So here's the image of the first issue with the goddess, and we'll talk a little bit about the story here in a second. And that image is drawn by Ron Lim, and then on the spine here, we have the Infinity Crusade, and then we have, I think that's Tom Rainey, if I'm not mistaken, Adam Warlock down there, the guy behind everything, and then the Divine Conclusion to the original Infinity Trilogy. This is the original Infinity Trilogy conclusion. Here are all the covers to the issues collected inside. The book retails for $125. So how does this fit into the original trilogy? Well, here you have the way it's supposed to be read. Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, and then wrapping it up with Infinity Crusade. All of this written by Jim Starlin. At least the miniseries, and then of course, some of the spin-offs. With Infinity Gauntlet, you have Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet, of course, and what he did to the universe. With Infinity War, you had Adam Warlock now in control of the Infinity Gauntlet, but in order to do that, he had to wipe away all his evil and all his goodness. So his evil becomes this form known as the Magus, which we've seen before in previous uh, issues of Captain Marvel uh, and in previous years of Marvel Comics. However, not only was it just this evil that got wiped away, but the goodness in him got wiped away, and that created this being known as the goddess. So that's where we are. And of course, the OCD in me wishes they would reprint Infinity War with a new art on the spine so it can match Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity Crusade. But that's probably just me. No, it's not. I know some of y'all are OCD just as bad as I am. Oh, and this was previously collected in a series of two trade paperbacks. However, this just collects the Infinity Crusade, six issues, Adam Warlock Chronicles, one through five, and then six issues of the uh, Warlock and the Infinity Watch. This collects all the tie-ins as well. But before we go inside, let's look at it under the dust jacket. So instead of the image of Adam Warlock on the spine, we have the image of the goddess. And this is the direct market cover right here from Mark Spector Moon Knight by Stephen Platt. Okay, so let's get this open. We have these grayish looking bookend pages. An image from, that's an issue of Thor right here, if I'm not mistaken. Then later on, we get this awesome fight between Thor and Drax, uh, all drawn by Tom Grinberg. And I know how some people feel about Trump Grindberg, but I don't care. I love his artwork. Um, so, yes, I'm sorry. Here are the credits, the writers, the pencilers. Of course, Jim Starlin being the main writer on the book. Um, and then we have all the pencilers. Ron Lim doing the main miniseries. Um, all the inkers, the colorists, uh, the letterers, and then additional editors. And then the table of contents right here where you can find each of the books. So, to clarify it for people wondering how this was mapped out, it is mapped different than the previous two Infinity series, by the way. Uh, so, we go from Infinity Crusade to Warlock Chronicles, which was the eight-issue uh, miniseries. And then we jump to Warlock and the Infinity Watch. And then we go back to Infinity Crusade number two. So it looks like they're collecting the big clump of issues that are necessary for the enjoyment of uh, the Infinity Crusade story in between the chapters of Infinity Crusade. So in between Infinity Crusade 2 and 3, you got to read Warlock Chronicles 2 and Warlock and the Infinity Watch number 19. That wasn't done in Infinity Gauntlet, nor in the Infinity War. So for the first time, we actually have issues in between the event issues that I think are necessary to read. 
100% necessary? Not really, because as a kid, I just read the main event. I just read Infinity Crusade 1 through 6, and I was able to understand it. There are side stories that I wanted to read, and I had no idea um, that they were collected in the um, Adam Warlock Chronicles or the Infinity Watch. So, what does this collect? Because this collects a lot. We have a lot of tie-in issues here for this event. So, as you saw towards the beginning, this does collect... Infinity Crusade 1 through 6, the Warlock Chronicles 1 through 5, uh, Warlock and the Infinity Watch 18 through 22, Thor 463 to 467, that's during the Ron Mars years, Iron Man 294 and 295, Avengers West Coast 96 and 97, Dark Hawk, hells yes, 30 and 31, Cage, that's the Luke Cage series from the 90s, number 17, Alpha Flight 122 to 127, that's a big chunk of Alpha Flight. Uh, Mark Spector Moon Knight, number 57, and just a little bit of number 56 in here. Collecting for the first time in oversized format, some Stephen Platt artwork. Uh, you also have Silver Surfer, number 83 to 85. Deathlock, number 28. Uh, a little bit of material from Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, 54 through 56. Web of Spider-Man, 104 to 106. Silver Sable, never collected it. I don't think Silver Sable been collected in any kind of collected edition. Uh, and the Wild Pack. 16 and 17, and to wrap it all up, Deathlock, number 28 and 29. That is a lot of books to be collected in here. So, what is the premise of the story? What is the premise of Infinity Crusade? If Infinity Gauntlet was about Thanos' journey to try to impress death, and Infinity War was about the, the all-out evil coming after the universe then why do we fear this all-out goodness? Why do we fear the goddess if all she's trying to do is wipe out all evil? So this is a really cool idea. Um, so pretty much the premise, like I mentioned, is that we ha now have an incarnation of all goodness and that is known as the goddess. And she's recruiting her own army. And these are these characters here that are heavily religious, whether it's Christianity or wherever planet they come from, they believe in something or they have a strong belief in morality and loyalty. Or they've been really close to death and therefore believe in the afterlife. So with this army that she's sort of pushing let's just call it brainwashing, uh, into following her, she builds her own planet. And her own planet is called Paradise Omega. And here, she has the idea where she just wants to wipe away all the evil in the world. However, this doesn't sit too well with some of our heroes. So our heroes are like, no, evil needs to exist in order to balance out life. You can't have just all good people. It doesn't make any sense. And this is Iron Man and... Uh, uh, the Vision, and Reed Richards the fan from the Fantastic Four. Now, during issue one, Adam Warlock is sent somewhere, and the only way you can find out where he is sent, which plays an important part later on, is by reading the Warlock Chronicles. And then Reed Richards is summoned somewhere in issue one of the Infinity Crusade, and to find out where he went, you have to read Warlock and the Infinity Watch number 18, where he teams up with the Infinity Watch. So... That's pretty much it. It's hero versus hero again. Some of the heroes that believe in the goddess or are brainwashed by the goddess against the heroes of Earth that are trying to stop this from happening because it sounds like madness. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of twists in here that they realize, ah, see, we told you she was crazy. So that's what this main story arc is about. Uh, Thanos, of course, comes back because she sees him as a threat. Uh, they have dealings. Actually, Thanos and um, Warlock, Adam Warlock, have a team up uh, with making a deal with Mephisto of all people. But it is all within these pages. I remember Silver Surfer getting all huge too, like um, when he turns against her. Now, let's talk about some of the artwork in here because while this is all written by Jim Starlin, we have Ron Lim on the main story arc, which is, of course, the Infinity Crusade. He's the artist that finished out the Infinity Gauntlet when George Perez left the book, and then he did all of the Infinity War by himself. So he's not a stranger to any of these characters or to the cosmic universe. So And he's a damn fast artist because I remember at one time he was working, and this is no exaggeration, like he was working on like four or five books a month. The dude can draw fast. And it's really good to still see his name on books these days.
Then we had Tom Rainey kicking off the Warlock Chronicles. Now, there are some fill-in artists. This only lasted eight issues. And six through eight are not collected in here, by the way. Just uh, for those that are wondering. So, I'm not sure how they will be collected. But... This is um, this is Tom Rainey's artwork. And I'm going to show you some artwork from Tom Rainey that I love here in a second. And then we had Tom Grinberg help out Angel Medina on the pages of Adam Warlock and the Infinity Watch. And Tom Grinberg is an artist to me that I know a lot of people either love or hate. And I know a lot of my friends hated his artwork. But to me, he was like this perfect blend of Mike Mignola and uh, Frazetta together. Like, if they were to make an offspring somehow, this is the type of artwork you would get. I I get the hate for his artwork, but to me, I thought this was epic. And I'm going to show you a fight here in a second. And some of you will disagree with me, of course, and that's completely okay. It doesn't make your opinion invalid. Okay, before I go to show you that artwork, there is one thing that I would have loved to have seen collected in between these pages. And that is the issues of Silver Surfer where he's fighting Fire Lord at least. But I realize that that is not written by Jim Starlin. Those were written by Ron Mars. But I kind of wish they had put those in between the Infinity Crusade issues. But keeping them towards the end of the book is okay, I guess. Um, we've had the Silver Surfer epic collection that collects those issues too. For those that are wondering if this is available anywhere else. Now, yeah, let's look at this fight here. Okay, so this is the issue right here that I want to show first. Uh, now, something you have to understand before I show you these pages is I was heavily into anime and manga. This is 1993, the summer of 1993. Um, I was going back to high school, and I was huge, huge into anime and manga. So to me, I wanted to see some of this action that I have seen in anime and in manga in American comics uh, because I was so tired of the talking heads and this is, I remember, the, one of the few times that I got it. And it's during this fight between Adam Warlock and Magus where it just seemed like all-out badassness. And then there's no talking later on. It's just literally fighting. And I was like, yes, this is what I want. And easy to follow panels. And then we get this crazy page where it's just literally them fighting. And it's, like I said, it's easy to follow the fights. I don't know if it was choreographed for Tom Rainey or not. But yeah, right here where he just knocks the crap out of Magus. That's awesome. Okay, that's the first one. And then, within the next uh, chapter, you get a similar fight. This is all by Tom Grinberg, and this is either the selling or breaking point to some of you all. But I love this stuff. Between Thor and Drax. Damn, look at that. that that's, oh, just look at that manliness. You can almost feel the testosterone. That's so awesome. Man, you know, for a kid that in high school, I'm going to get that big one day. Yeah, right. But anyway, I just wanted to show those uh, couple of pages just to see what the action sequences look like during this time in the 90s. Because, you know, the 90s get a bad rap for having horrible artwork, for having horrible writing. But there are some gems in there. So after Infinity Crusade number 6, this is where we get the rest of the comics collected in the back. So these are tie-in issues. Not really that big of importance. Like I said, the only one I would have kept in between Infinity Crusade, I think it's issues 4 and 5, is that Silver Surfer issue. And that's just one. But for the first time, a lot of this stuff has been collected. I don't think any of the store stuff has ever been collected in any collected edition. This is during the Ron Mars years. And then this is artwork by Bruce Zick. And then we have uh, Iron Man here. This is the Len Kamiski years. Uh, just showcasing some of that art of Iron Man, then Avengers, West Coast. Um, I remember Simon Furman was wrapping up the run of Alpha Flight before it got canceled. Uh, Furman's the guy that finished out Transformers, so irony. Yeah, but these issues of Thor, never been collected in any kind of format. So it's really cool to see them here for the first time in oversized format. And speaking of oversized, here's the cage issue. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, well, I look for it. I do remember this issue right here of Web of Spider-Man because it had these interesting four-panel pages from time to time. It's not the only time you see it. You see it later. Yeah, right here during the fight sequences. But the issue I was looking for, yeah, right here. Mark Spector Moon Knight. The book that just propelled Stephen Platt to just celebrity status. Everyone at Image, if you ever watched the Image Revolution documentary, you see how Tom McFarlane 
and Rob Liefeld, or no, it was Sylvester and Rob Liefeld wanted this guy, after seeing his artwork on Moon Knight, to come over and work for them for Extreme Studios or for Top Cow Studios. And Rob Liefeld talks about the things he did, like buying him a car in order for him to come and work uh, for Extreme Studios. But this is it. This is Stephen Platt. I mean, I remember seeing that first time, issue 55 of Mark Spector and Moon Knight, and thinking, man, that guy's art is, he's going to be the next McFarlane. And granted, you know, I don't think he ever got that huge, but there's a lot of people that still love his artwork, and this is one of the issues that, like I said, that just solidified him as one of these rising stars in the 90s, and for the first time ever, collected in an oversized format. Now, I realize this kind of artwork is not for everybody, but neither is Tom Grindberg. Had to throw that dude's name in there again. This is Bruce Patterson, I think. Yeah, Simon Furman. And then just a bunch of artists working on the sort of final issue. Stephen Butler did these here. Man, these comics bring back a lot of memories. Fond memories, of course. This is the issue right here that I wish they had collected in between those issues of Infinity Crusade. It's the big fight between Silver Surfer and uh, Fire Lord. And then where he gets all souped up. Yeah, right here. The living bomb. Um, now, out of the original trilogy of course this is probably the one that a lot of people can agree that it's not as good as infinity gauntlet nor infinity war but i would love to know your opinion what do you think and now that we have this and we have the thanos omnibus we have the first and last trilogy the cosmic trilogy uh, by jim starlin now what i would love to see collected is the marvel the end the infinity abyss and the Thanos Redemption, which is known as the second uh, Cosmic Trilogy by Jim Starlin. I would love to see that collected in omnibus format. Uh, they could even release it as an Annihilation prologue. Now, let's look at the extras in the back. Okay, so we have uh, Infinity Crusade, a Marvel from the Marvel previews here, where Jim Starlin talks about the story. And then again, editors talking about the story, the Warlock Chronicles, what they are. Uh, we get house ads back here. By the way, the book has 1,200 pages and again, retails for $125. Oh, yeah. That's Brett Blevins, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Marvel Swimsuit Special, Brett Blevins. Got to get that Marvel Swimsuit Omnibus, baby. Yes, I wish they had used this uh, for the art on the board, but I get it. I mean, you'd have to hold the book right side up in order for this image to make sense and not a lot of people do that with their omnis and was also used as a house ad and then you have some original pages back here original artwork uncolored uninked and then covers to the trade paperbacks cover to the uh death of mockingbird spoilers um trade paperback this is the epic collection right here i was talking about the resurrection and then drax number two that's interesting that's the variant cover from ron Lim. see Still drawing covers. Now, let's talk about this binding. It is sewn binding, and here's that eye. Not as big and not as small as some of the ones I've seen, but we do have to talk about how it affects the spreads. This is issue one towards the very beginning, about 12 pages in. Honestly, very minimal gutter loss from my perspective. Maybe you guys see something else. That's just my opinion. Let's get to the middle of the book. Okay, we're at page 508 and 9. Um, not exactly the middle, of course, but this kind of gives you an idea of what to expect from the spreads around this area. So, like I mentioned, very minimal gutter loss, if any, there. Let's look in the back. Here is the very last issue collected in this omnibus before we get to the extras in the back. And this is what the spreads look like. This is from the issue of Thor. So, a little more gutter loss than in the middle, but this is what to expect from this omnibus. But that, as they say... Is that now when this book comes out don't forget to check out our sponsor the editions up to 50 percent off retail price cheap graphic novels prides itself on excellent packaging so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition and they have amazing customer service check out their bargain deals for up to 90 percent off cover price and for all you minties that are watching if you're a first-time customer don't forget to mention that near me condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order now this is only for us customers cheap graphic novels.com your source for the hottest books with deep discounts customer service and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more 
And that was the page count, the build, and the content of this omnibus, and how it fits in with the original Infinity Trilogy. Let me know in those comments down below if you're picking it up, what you thought of the story, if you've read it, did you think it was as good as Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity War, or did you pick it up just for completest sake, or if you've never read any of this stuff. I would love to know all those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. We can be found on Redbubble and on Patreon. Those are amazing ways to support the channel, and thank you so much to our existing patrons. We are also on social media. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and an Instagram page, and you can follow that at, at Near Mint Con. And more importantly, please, everybody, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.